Eli Whitney was one of the greater inventors of the Industrial Revolution. His invention helped shape the way the United States made most of their income. It helped shape the U.S. industry as a whole. The invention of the cotton gin was one of the major turning points of the Industrial Revolution because it helped to shape the U.S. economy, and it was one of the major causes of the United States Civil War. Why would cotton affect so much? How does it tie into the Industrial Revolution? British settlers brought cotton to Jamestown when they had first landed in America to see if it would grow. Cotton successfully grew in the Americas. The farmers began growing cotton there and shipping it back to Britain for it to be made into goods in British textile mills. The colonists were forbidden to manufacture goods on their own. During the Revolutionary War, exporting of cotton had come to a halt, so many farmers produced cotton to stock up for their own needs. When the war was over, the Industrial Revolution had taken to Europe, so there was a huge demand for cotton. When Eli recognized this huge demand, he decided to take action and invent the cotton gin. Eli was born on December 8, 1765. He grew up in Westboro, Massachusetts, and lived on a farm. He had always had an interest in machines and technology. Since he was living during the time of the Revolutionary War, he was very skilled at making nails using a machine that he invented himself. <clears throat> he then began making canes and women's hat pins. In 1789, he attended Yale and studied to become a lawyer. He graduated in 1792 and was hired by Katherine Green to be a tutor in South Carolina. Eli invented the cotton gin because he had heard from Catherine Green that there was a lack of green seed cotton. The problem was that it was taking slaves hours of manual labor to properly extract the fibers and clean the seeds. The cotton gin worked when raw cotton was pressed up against the wire screen. Then the worker would turn a handle, which would turn a wooden cylinder with rows of teeth on it. The teeth would then snag the cotton fibers and pull the fiber through the wire screen. The cotton seed could not pass through the wire screen therefore separating the cotton fibers into a small wood box inside the gin. The cotton gin was a remarkably clever invention and had many, many benefits to the farmers that used the gin to harvest and process cotton. First, the cotton gin increased the efficiency of picking cotton and separating the seeds from the fibers. Because of this, farmers could mass produce cotton and make major profits. Farmers could also shorten the cotton harvesting season because picking the cotton would become much faster. Additionally, they would also have the option to grow more cotton if they had the field space available. Second, it made U.S. flourish as the cotton producer and as an industrial center. The cotton gin made it much easier to grow and harvest cotton. Areas like Texas that didn't previously put too much money into the cotton business and slave trade became a major cotton producing state because of the cotton gin. The cotton production boom rivaled other major producers such as India and Egypt. Unfortunately, the cotton gin did cause disputes and controversy throughout the South. There was much competition between farmers in the South because the cotton gin increased the value of the land. Many farmers had bought huge plots of land. Because of this, the growth in the cities of industries was stifled. Also, the price of cotton paid by textile mills fluctuated up and down quite frequently. Quote, a planter could get out of his bed poor and go to bed rich, or vice versa. End quote. Insect infestation was also a problem. Many farmers planted all of their farmland only with cotton. Because of this, bugs such as the bull weevil could swarm entire fields and kill all of the crops in just one day. This devastated farmers and resulted in a huge loss of profit. There are also problems with the price and copyright of the gin itself. Eli patented his cotton gin in 1794. Since he was charging farmers who used the gin two-fifths of their profits, many decided to pirate idea of the cotton gin to create their own version. This stirred up many legal battles between Whitney and the farmers. They all settled on an agreement that they would have to market the gins at a more affordable price. Because of this price reduction, Eli made almost no profit. Around the mid-1800s, cotton production in the South skyrocketed. More than 1 million bales of cotton had been produced by 1840. Because of the huge demand for cotton, there were many more Southerners being enslaved on cotton plantations to help grow and pick the crop. By 1860, almost one-third of the U.S. population in the southern states was enslaved. The cotton gin actually helped kick the slave trade back into gear and was just starting to burn out. Before the gin was invented, the U.S. produced about 750,000 bales of cotton. 
In 1850, over 2,850,000 bales of cotton were being produced. Because the gin made it faster to process the cotton, plantation owners could harvest massive plots of land and make an enormous profit. As cotton farms were expanding, so was the need for more enslaved workers. When the first federal census of 1790 took place, there were 697,897 slaves counted. In 1810, there were 1,200,000 slaves counted, which was a 70% increase from 1790. In 1860, there were 15 slave states in the South, more than double it used to be. In the South, uh, one out of every three people was a slave. Because the slave trade had grown enormously in the last decade since the cotton gin had been invented, people like William H. Seward wanted to completely abolish slavery altogether. William believed that going to war with the Confederate States just might be necessary to stop slavery. Senator James Hammond of South Carolina knew that the cotton industry would be a major war tactic. The anti-slavery states fought the Confederacy. The Northern States Union naval blockade successfully cut cotton trade with foreign countries such as France and England. Therefore, the Confederate profit from cotton came to a bare minimum, close to none at all. By the time the Civil War had ended in 1865, the Confederacy had no cotton, money, or political power left. The Union held abolished slavery and cotton was no longer the cash crop as it had been. It also had put the sale of cotton gins on hold because the plantation owners had no sufficient supply of money or employees to plant and harvest cotton. But the textile mills in the north were in dire need of a cotton supply. They needed cotton to manufacture the goods they sold, like wagon covers, tents, clothing, and other much-needed items. As a result of not having a cotton supply, the entire eastern half of the United States was extremely poor. Many families separated as more and more people chose to go seek better lives in the western states, such as California. The South was beginning to come back and start farming crops again. They started to build modified cotton gins with mechanical feeders that would feed the cotton automatically into the gin saws and the cotton condensers, which would catch the cotton lint in the basket and condense it into sheets of matted fiber, which made the lint easier to bale up later. These mechanical improvements to the gin speeded up processing cotton and reduced the demand for human labor. The cotton gin was a hugely important invention that helped the Europeans during the Industrial Revolution, and it also sparked some of the major turning points in U.S. history, like the Civil War. It also helped shape the farming technology of today. The cotton gin plays a huge role in how the United States was formed. People say, who cares? Why does a simple cotton gin matter? Well, the simple cotton gin matters a whole lot in history. The United States could have been a whole lot different kind of place if it wasn't for Eli Whitney and the invention of the cotton gin.